Good evening, Facebook family, friends, my faithful warrior, YouTube subscribers. Today it is uh, Tuesday, the 24th of October. I'm just getting back in from the gym. Having a little glass of wine. What is this? Tonight's why I'm drinking some Sutter Home. Moscato with some sangria mix or something. Not expensive, ten dollars. It was something on sale. I tried to try it again. These cheap wines. I need to stop and wasting my ten bucks on this mess. Um, so anyway, I wanted to talk tonight about some personal issues I've been having over the past few years. I think it's to be honest with you. I think my problem started. My therapist seems to think that I probably had this problem all my life. I suffer suffer from severe anxiety, and I have panic attacks that cause me to my behavior to become sometimes irrational. Um, it's hard to explain unless you've ever had an anxiety attack or a panic attack. But in my case, I had severe anxiety. And it wouldn't just last for uh, a moment, it would last for days. And if you've ever had an anxiety attack that's just lasting and going on, you feel like well, you're going crazy because you don't know what. If. Now that I've been properly diagnosed um, and on medication, which well, I'm going to tell you about the medicines my doctor put me on. I finally have some relief. A lot of you all might think, well, anxiety isn't that bad. But, oh, boy. I started having these anxiety attacks. You know, after, probably when I was a, 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 um, a kid. This has been a problem I've had all my life. I would get excited about the holidays or the school test or the start of school. And the anxiety would make me... Um, act out um, destructively. And I didn't know what it was. I've had this problem for a long time. Pretty much all my life. So for me to get diagnosed in, in treatment at 47, it's a long time to go, <laughs> with a serious issue, and this is a very serious issue, um, without getting properly treated. First, you have to acknowledge that there is a problem. I would say I acknowledged there was a problem. I knew something wasn't right um, when I turned 40. I don't know what it was about me turning 40. Well, two things. 2007, when the economy tanked, there was a lot of anxiety for me. And I was just assuming the economy's tanked. We've lost our income. We're losing houses, cars, boats. Um, repo, repo to everything, repossessed employees banging on the door, wanting work on paychecks, and we don't have the money. So I just assume that part, but it was anxiety, also creating mental health issues for me at that time, also. But as I rolled closer to 40 years of age, it got really bad. Really, really bad. Kind of like this dog whining over here. She's having an anxiety attack too. I don't know why. Oh, one of them got a biscuit not sharing with her. Come here, Mandy. So, first of all, I wanted to. Okay, so what is anxiety? Because some people may not understand what it is exactly. What is an anxiety attack? I suppose that didn't pull this up. All right, so you kind of get a definition of what it is. Anxiety attacks and symptoms can feel awful, frightening, and intense. They can be so powerful that they seem uncomfortable. What does it feel like? For doctors to diagnose a panic attack, they look for these four of the following signs. Sweating, trembling, shortness of breath, a choking sensation, chest pain, nausea, dizziness, and racing heart. Funny, I never had any of those when I had my panic attacks. They would get... Maybe I never had them that severe. 
Now, boy, there's an anxiety. I'm trying to find it again. I cannot find this thing. I'm so, it's the cute looking at panic attacks. <sighs> well, the anxiety attacks in their symptoms, anxiety attacks also known as panic attacks and episodes of intense panic or, or fear. Okay, so now that's a better understanding of what I was going through. Anxiety attacks usually occur suddenly without warning. Ooh, that's true. And, but during that short time, the terror can be so severe that you feel as if you're about to die, totally lose control. Um, my version of the anxiety attack, like I said, would last um, sometimes for days, weeks. I'd wake up having these, this, it feels like something's going on with your heart. For a long time, I kept going to the doctor and saying, something's going on with my heart. But it wasn't my heart, it was the anxiety. The way it feels is almost like your heart is about to jump out your chest. It's hard to even explain it. But about the time I turned 40, things started to get severe because I was realized I was entering a point in my life at 40. I wasn't exactly happy with a lot of things that were going on. <laughs> you know, you, you, you plan out this beautiful life. When I turned 30, I had this beautiful party. We lived in a brand new house. We had all these, this, all this stuff. I had a chef over there preparing food. You know, you think that just when you have these milestones, 30s, 40s, and 50s, life is supposed to be better. When I turned 40, we had taken a drastic step back because of the economic situation that was going on. And I'm uh, trying to recover. So there was no fancy party. Um, that guy I wanted to do. It was, I, I remember going out looking at cakes that cost a thousand dollars. That was gonna buy for my fortieth birthday party a thousand dollar cake. The niggas would eat that cake up and talk about me like a damn dog. That cake didn't even taste good. That's how foolish I was back then. That's how I was living in Niggaville. Like, is anybody spending a thousand dollars on a cake out for a birthday party? That cake was a thousand dollars. Beautiful though. Um. And I remember that summer, they were, I'm talking to my mother, I said, Mom, something's not right. And there's a video that I did with my mother, and I was kind of, we, she was praying for me. Mm. When I look back on that, that I don't know why I never went and sought professional help until now. Maybe because things are getting so crazy, um, erratic, got worse. Um, you, I knew it was an issue. I knew I was having a problem. I just didn't go seek the proper help to get better. Maybe because you know, we're human beings. And I kept thinking, okay, this is a, this a pass. Let me give it some time. I, I, another thing that I use for self medication was the gym. So whenever I was having these panic attacks, anxiety attacks, or whatever, I made sure to go to the gym and work out. It made me feel better for the moment. So I aggressively worked out harder thinking this will, this is how my brain was thinking at the time, that the more I worked out, I can resolve these issues going on. I knew it was something wrong, didn't really sure what, exactly couldn't put my finger on it. Um, I just thought maybe it was just life. But if you're going through life dealing with severe depression, Severe anxiety or panic attacks or any type of mental issue. First, you have to acknowledge it is a mental issue. It's not just life. People don't walk around. I would leave the house, lock the door, get halfway down the road, and I would get this panic, anxiety, like, did I lock the door? Did I set the alarm? And I'd have to say, no. The only way I could calm myself down would be to turn that car around, come back to the house, 
Make sure those, the gates were locked. It, it, yeah, I dealt with this for years. Years. Waking up in the middle of the night, checking my bank account to see if certain things went through. Um, checking my account balance consistently and being worried about, worried financial about, uh, finan financial, finances have always in, um, caused, even when I had a ton of money in the bank, I was still on the edge of my seat. You know, you're surrounded by a bunch of poor people, you don't want to join them at the poor club. So, <laughs> it's another way to pass it, but to this day, at a certain time, I don't check certain stuff. Especially when it gets close to bedtime. Because I'll lay there and think about it all night long. In fact, I've gotten to a point now where I leave my phone in the kitchen. And I go to the bedroom and let it charge in the kitchen. I don't want it near me because I don't want to be tempted to roll over and check something. So I'm getting better. This is a start. I'm moving in the right direction. This is taking... You know, the hard part is admitting and accepting that there is an issue here. I knew there was a problem. wasn't sure what it was and how to fix it. Now that I'm in treatment, I know how to fix it. I'm fixing it. This is not going to be something... Some people seem to think that this stuff could be resolved overnight. No, no. I'm 47. It's been going on a long time, so it's going to take some time. Probably some... Okay, so they put me on Xanax. This is not the first time I've taken Xanax. Um, and something else. Um, Clause of... Clause of... Clause of... Clause of... Clause of... Clause of... Something, I don't know. But anyway... This is the early stages. And, um... I'm feeling better. Somewhat. It's still there, though. It's not gone. It's, it's, but I, I feel some relief, a little. Like, this is the early stages. This is, this is a problem that I've had for, for years. So I know it's not going to be able to. I, I, you know, I'll come to the conclusion some things cannot be resolved overnight. And it's going to take some time. It took us 47 years to get to this point. Now we got to start dissecting the problem and fixing it. And that's why I'm so strongly... The funny part is in my 20s, I was under um, seeing a the therapist. Um, that's probably some of the best things I could have did. And I got kind of fell out of it. I mean, I stopped going after... And I saw this therapist for a long time. And he was helping me dealing with my religion and sexuality issues and why my relationships were so messed up. There was a lot of self-esteem. There was a lot of stuff going on in my 20s. But this great doctor, he's worth every dime, helped me see clear life clearly. And I was criticized by some family members and friends because I was seeing a therapist. I, truthfully, I feel that if you're a black person living in America, we all, you need to be out of therapy. Because there's so many issues in our communities that we just sweep under the rug and pretend like they don't exist instead of getting out of the open. And this isn't an easy video for me because I've been thinking about this and thinking about this. And I said, well, I'm not the only person who's suffering from this issue. Or has suffered from this issue. There are a lot of people who are probably having the same problem right as we speak, like this damn doggy right here on this flow. Here. Man. Let me give her a penis so she may be quiet. Here you go. But anyway, so I know there are a lot of people probably going through it, and they probably have not. No, don't know how to seek treatment. Um, I don't have health insurance, so I have to pay for a lot of stuff out of pocket. 
health insurance has proven to be very expensive for me. And all I take is a blood pressure medicine. Like, so should I pay for this health insurance? And all I need is a little, just my blood pressure medicine that costs me all of nine bucks. I'll get it for free, but I got to pay $700. Somebody else told me about, about some cheaper insurance policies. I'm going to check into it again. But a lot of those policies don't cover mental health therapy. You have to go get your good paying job at Delta, Coca Cola, major company, Atlanta Public Schools, Fulton, and to get those to get that as part of your um, coverage. We know them folks ain't hiring right by now. Although I did see something with Delta looking to hire all these flight attendants. And, uh, good luck with that. But I am feeling better. Things are improving. Um, I'm not ranting and raving as much. I'm a calm. It's, it's like everything is calming down finally. Um, but for me, I'm still kind of kicking myself because I'm thinking, why did I wait so long to finally wake up and say, okay, I got to fix this problem. I knew it was an issue. I knew something wasn't right. Just didn't know what it was and how to treat it. So there's treatment available. No difference in people. When people tell me they, they suffer from depression. Um, I never had depression. Mine was, you know. But a lot of people who suffer from depression also don't seek treatment. I had a lot of friends over the years commit suicide. There was one incident, or one young man that I was, I was, you ever find somebody that you really just admire and you, um, you really like this person, you're attracted to the person, but you know you can't be with that person, but you just like being in their presence because they're just a beautiful person. Well, this man, a friend of mine who later um, he was at my home the funny part and we were having a pool party hanging out the, the night before having a great time hanging out at the pool um, just laughing fun just this was like in the did he do that it was anyway a few days later we found out from his family members that he'd been home he left that party and went home and uh, shot and killed himself. Committed suicide. This was shocking to everybody. We were like, okay, where'd this come from? But then later on, we found out he had been suffering from severe depression. But he never said a word. We didn't know. He was seemed like a happy, normal, everyday person who was enjoying life. He was a handsome, very handsome, attractive man. But he killed himself. Now that's a devastating impact on me for years. I've had a lot of friends commit suicide over the years, and I'm all and you, it, it 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 angered me. He was like, "Why didn't you just say something? Why not talk about it?" But we don't talk in our community. Um, the black community is very good at sweeping so many issues under the rug. My mother, God bless her soul, I love her, my dear, but she's so good at hiding stuff. She won't say nothing until it's too late. And so things have gotten so bad off, it's like, okay, why didn't you say something about this? She waits to, she's very quiet about she just likes to sweep things under the rug and pretend it doesn't exist. Or maybe she's just a, that's just her way of dealing with things. Like there were some serious issues going on within my immediate family. I didn't know that any of this stuff was going on until it exploded. And I'm like, okay, when did this happen? And this has been going on. This is what my mom didn't want us to say nothing. I said, okay, y'all know how mama is, so y'all should have said something. <laughs> to me, at least I could have known. This is taking me by shock and surprise. But anyway, this is, I just want to do a video to discuss I'm in treatment. 
with my anxiety and panic attacks. I hope my heart can calm down. <laughs> Y'all just don't know. I've had, I've, when I'm having those anxiety attacks and pa panic attacks, my behavior becomes very erratic. And I do a lot of things I regret. Because it's, it's hard to explain. It's complicated. I'm just glad to I recognize that. And you help. And I and this is not an easy video because I'm I'm kind of embarrassed about this because this is me admitting that there's um, something wrong with me mentally that I have no control over. And I shouldn't be embarrassed about discussing this. Should not be embarrassed. We should be readily able to discuss. I have anxiety. I suffer from panic attacks. I suffer from depression. People shouldn't have to go and hide the stuff that we do. Nah, I get it. So anyway, um, like I said, that's what's going on in my life. Hopefully, hopefully the videos, if you ever look through my videos, you see me ranting and raving. That's when those anxiety attacks. I routinely go through my videos and sometimes delete them. Because some should never have been posted. And I did the video. I, I mean, I go through there. Some videos, there were some videos I was getting a lot of views on. And I said, oh, this is not a good video. Delete. Let me get rid of it. Um, and I was going through those issues at the time. And was, so, I'm not perfect. I have faults and problems and issues as I everybody else. And I hope that I, and I, I want, I personally want to thank you all for watching my videos and allowing me into your life. So we can discuss these types of issues. Anyway, it is 9.20 at night. Today is Tuesday, October 24th, the year 2017. I'm about to take a shower. Um, go my ass to bed. You all have a good night. Look forward to reading your comments. Please share my videos with family members and friends. And I look forward to reading you all's comments. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Anyway, I'm out of here. You all have a good night.